Today we're getting into a very interesting topic, and that is how to own an Airbnb business without owning actual property. Let's get into it. Hello, welcome back, I'm Kat, and today we're getting in a really cool topic. I spent an ungodly amount of money on a course that taught me how to do this, and though I haven't implemented it myself because I do like owning the property myself because you have it also has as an asset, you can leverage that asset to get more assets, but if you are somebody who doesn't wanna own the property, you're also in a place where properties are so expensive, then this could be a great opportunity option for you. And that is owning an Airbnb business without owning the actual property. So today we're getting into how you can do this without owning physical property and also it being completely hands off if you have a full-time job or you are doing other things in your life and you do not want to manage Airbnb. I'm going to show you how you can do that. This, the official term is called Airbnb arbitrage and a quick summary rundown of how you do this. Essentially, instead of buying a property and then furnishing the property and listing it on Airbnb, you're going to contact owners of apartments or other people that own property to lease their property and then put it on Airbnb. So this is great because you don't have to worry about a down payment. You don't have to worry about your credit unless they want to run your credit, but we're going to, I'm going to tell you how you can get around this in a little bit. And then also when something breaks, you don't necessarily have to fix it because you don't own the property yourself. The owner would be still liable for stuff that breaks in the house, like a toilet, stuff like that. And it's also a lot easier to scale it this way since you're not owning property where you have to put, you know, 30, 40, $50,000 down on a house. Honestly, if you do it right to get started, you might only need $10,000. And if you are in the right city and you do this right, you might be able to get your money back within the first couple of months. Also, since this is going to be a business that you're doing, everything you'd buy is 100% deductible once taxes come. So everything you're buying for your Airbnb is going to save you a ton of money in taxes. And definitely talk to your tax person about this, but will save you a lot of money in taxes. There's also a lot of benefits for why landlords would want to rent to you as a business running Airbnb versus a long-term tenant. There are a lot of landlords out there, let me tell you, that are tired of being landlords. They are tired of getting the calls at three o'clock about the neighbor's cat is keeping them up at night, the toilet, the this, the that. They're tired of having to flip a house every six months or every year. They're tired of people not taking care of their property. And they're just tired of people that are just flat out rude tenants who just don't take care of stuff. Also, when you're doing Airbnb, you're also guaranteeing to the owner that they're gonna get the rent paid because you're a business working in that space rather than a long-term tenant. There are so many things that are COVID proof about Airbnb. If you don't have actual tourists coming to your city, you still have traveling nurses, you still have corporate tenants who stay a uh, longer term. And then of course you still have, you know, the one-off things, somebody house, you know, needs to be repaired. They go stay to Airbnb, stuff like that. I have some friends who are doing this who make over $50,000 a year with one Airbnb. So this has a lot of potential to scale and the sky is literally the limit what you can do with this. So let me show you the steps of what to do to get into this. So the first thing you need to do is do some research. So before you even look at where you're gonna open your Airbnb, you need to search where are people staying on Airbnb? How much are the prices for that area? as far as nightly prices, monthly prices, weekly prices. You can do this research on Airbnb itself to see where are those hot spots so you can get an apartment or a house in those areas. A good rule of thumb is if you're by a university, also your downtown area and hospitals are great places to be around. When you're trying to calculate what you can afford for your monthly rent from a property owner, you wanna calculate it at 50% occupancy because depending on your city, which is you know very likely, it's gonna be higher than that. So anything above 50% then is just gonna be a cash cow. 
But if you calculate it at 50%, that at least gives you a little cushion to be safe if it is around 50%, especially in the off season, you know, winter, stuff like that. You don't want to calculate it at a high percentage at like 90% occupancy, because then if there is ever a time that it's at 60%, 70%, you're not able to pay your rent, which is not good. So how to do this properly? Let's just say you find an area that is really popular and the nightly rate is going for $100. So 30 days approximately in every month, half of that is $1,500. So you're gonna wanna find somewhere you can rent for well below that to make sure you can make your, your uh, payment. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna find your owners. Private owners are gonna be best because you can talk directly to the person who owns the property. I would stay away from big organizations and property managers because they're really hands off. They don't want extra complicatedness. They really do not care. You wanna find the actual owners of these properties so private owners are going to be best there are many different facebook groups i know uh, where i am locally you just put the city and then private landlords you will find them there are facebook groups all over the place you can also call rent signs in your area and see if you're talking to the actual owner there are so many mom and pop owners just call around you'll find somebody in general for your first airbnb i always recommend going with an apartment why because apartments have less maintenance you don't have a yard you don't have all this extra maintenance that comes with the house. Also, your apartments usually have higher turnover than a house. You might have more willing landlords to let you do Airbnb, whereas a house, a lot of people stay for five, six, seven, eight years and you know, it's a little bit harder to pitch to that. However, houses do a lot better because you have privacy. So people definitely do like houses as well. Once you are talking to a private landlord, the next thing you wanna do is pitch yourself. That's number three. Pitch yourself why it's way better to rent to your company as an Airbnb business owner than a long-term tenant. Trust me, it's not that hard to do. You're gonna be talking about guaranteed rent every month because you have a business running through there that is generating income. You're gonna talk about how since you're cleaning the property multiple times a week, the house is gonna stay maintained. This is huge. Everybody wants their properties to stay maintained. You're also gonna be in the property a lot more often to keep up with maintenance. This is huge. The fourth thing you're gonna do is you're gonna sign a lease and furnish the property. Many furniture stores have financing, so if you go new, for example, Nebraska Furniture Mart, if you have a Nebraska Furniture Mart in your area, there's one in Dallas and a couple other places, they have 0% APR for the first 18 months, I believe. So zero interest for the first 18 months if you buy there. There are lots of other furniture stores that offer the same thing. So you don't have to come up with the money all at once, which is amazing. But there's so many different options. You can do Facebook Marketplace, you can do thrift stores. If you're in a bigger city, you have a lot more options to do thrifting and used items, which will definitely keep your prices down. But if you're in a smaller city, you might have to go new, but that's okay, that's also great. And if you are low on funds while you're furnishing your Airbnb, you should check out this awesome app called Ernie. Earning is helping people everywhere take control of their money by allowing you to access your money when you need it instead of payday especially when payday has not came today, okay? When you are furnishing your Airbnb, you might become short on cash from day to day. But as long as you went to work today, they will cover you. Mm -hmm. The best part is there's no mandatory fees. There is a tipping process though. If you are happy, you can tip what you think is fair, but zero is also an option. This is not a loan. There is no interest. There is no reporting to the bureaus. Just accessing the money you earn today when you need it. To use earning, all you need is to have a steady paycheck, a checking account, and a smartphone. And I know all y'all Cadillacs out there have all those three things. How do you like the name Cadillacs for um, the family? What do you think? Let me know in the comments. To get access to your money before payday, all you need to do is connect your bank account, add your employment info to help earning and recognize your pay schedule, and that's it. Once you've done that, you can either enter your GPS, your work email, your electronic timesheets to confirm how many hours you've worked and how much you are making from week to week. And ta-da, now you have furniture money when you're in a bind. 
And thank you to Ernie for sponsoring this video and helping out my audience. Okay, step number five is once your property is furnished, now you're gonna take pictures. You can get this professionally done or you can do it yourself on a smartphone. I recommend iPhone because depending on which model you have, you have like a 0.5 option, which makes it zoom really far out. So you have a wide lens camera, which is awesome. Number six is list the son of a gun everywhere. Put it on Airbnb, put it on VRBO, put it on Booking, put it on Expedia, put it on HomeAway, and then sync all of your calendars together to get the maximum exposure as possible. Number seven is you're gonna clean your Airbnb once your listing has booked. So after each stay, you can either do this yourself, you're gonna charge a cleaning fee, usually around $45, $50 around there, maybe more depending on the quality of your property. And you can hire somebody to do this. There's a website called TurnBnB, I believe. It's kind of like Airbnb for cleaning. It's amazing. Or you can do it yourself. I recommend if you want to be hands off, get a property manager. They will streamline all this for you where you just are getting checks in every month. You don't have to worry about anything. Or if you just have the one Airbnb, you know, it's by your house, you know, you have some free time, then you can do it yourself. The last thing you're gonna do, you're gonna collect your money and then pay your taxes. Make sure that when you are receiving the money from Airbnb, you are putting away every, every booking, whatever tax percentage that you are taxed at away in a bank. So at the end of the year, you're not surprised about how much money you owe to Uncle Sam. All right, well, that's all I have for you today, guys. Super excited about this one because I think most people can get into this even if you're not an interior designer, even if you know we've all stayed somewhere and you like this style, you can do a lot of research, figure out what designs and what trends are in. And if you don't have $10,000, you can scale that down. You can also get a loan if you're really committed. You will, you know, especially a small loan like $10,000 with a business like this, you can totally get back like very, very quickly. So your main expenses are going to be first your deposit, first month's rent. It also, you can negotiate with your landlord as well if you have to pay a deposit since, you know, your situation is very different. And then you're gonna pay for utilities. This also depends on your apartment. Sometimes your apartment will pay your utilities for you. Not very common where I'm at. Your Wi-Fi, maintenance, and your cleaners. That's all the expenses I take on every single month. So hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like this video if you found any value and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, smash the like button. Like, what are you doing? I will see you in the bloopers. Bye guys. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> my shirt just undid itself. you could make back in about, also when you are doing Airbnb and COVID uh, corporate, um, corporate, calculate it at 50% occupant, occupant, ugh. you should calculate it at 50% occupancy. Oh, why does that sound weird? Am I saying that wrong? Occupancy. Occupancy, I said it right. What is wrong with me? I almost burped. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Airbnb owner, business owner, an Airbnb. So they're not gonna be there, you know, or, you know, whatever, sorry, let's take that. We're just done with that. Okay, number four. All right, we're doing the, um, whatchamacallit, the promo thingy right now. Oh, Earning is helping people, wait. Er, let's do that again, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Everywhere, sorry, just allowing you to access your money when, just ask that. To use earning, you need to, come on, come on. Oh my God, it was so good. You can either, uh, you can enter your GPS, your work email, your electronic trans channel. That's pretty much all the expenses I incur, occur, occur, incur. incur.